So that is what they are concerned with. But that is not going to build our civilization. Our civilization is to be built, will be built on the basis of the knowledge that we have. Let's take, for example, the Korean people. You know Samsung today. I have a Samsung phone in my pocket. I have the iPhone also, but I have Samsung in my pocket. Ten years ago, 20 years ago, you wouldn't think of getting something from Korea. It's a backward nation. I remember going to Korea way back in 1965 when I was a member of parliament. It was very backward. They were learning from us, from Malaysia, how to industrialize. But they decided that they must face, they must develop their country. Their leader, who was uh, accused of being a dictator, Park Chung-hee, the father of the new president, he decided that Korea must make progress and keep and be as, as industrialized as Japan. The advice he got from the Americans was that Korea should uh, concentrate on agriculture and making small, simple products. But Park Chung-hee did not agree. He was, uh, you know, a bit of a, a dictator. He likes to have, like some prime ministers in Malaysia also. <laughs> he rejected the advice given him by the Americans and by the World Bank, and he decided that Korea should be as good as Japan. He was actually an officer in the Japanese army when Japan occupied Korea. He decided that Korea must be like Japan. How was he to, go to do this? So he decided to call about 10 or 12 prominent small business people who had succeeded. People like the man who founded Hyundai, Samsung, Daewoo, and the, they were called by the president and they were told, you go into this industry, the government will back you, we will lend you money, but if you fail, you get thrown out. And see, so these people were given full backing with funds and with policies of the government compatible with their development and with also laws that enable them to grow. And these people then took up the challenge by their president and decided to go into heavy industries. They identified the heavy industries. They wanted to build ships. They wanted to build motor cars. They wanted to go into the electronics, etc. Each one of them, the ones chosen by the president, led the way because they were backed by the president. And you know what happened today? Today, Samsung, a name that you didn't know before, now leads the world and was even able to beat Apple and, other, and Sony. It's bigger than Apple, it's bigger than Sony. This country, these people who were very backward before, known as the Hermit Kingdom, Korea before did not want to have anything to do with the rest of the world. They were hermits. They just want to be by themselves. But today, they are the leaders in so many fields. They can do, they can build complicated things much faster than most other people, most other industrialized people uh, that you see. For example, uh, recently, a um, Malaysian boat building company, they build uh, sophisticated boats for the uh, petroleum industry, anchor handling, uh, barges, etc. all kinds of very sophisticated boats. So this company was given a contract by the government. Uh, of course, when you, the government gives a contract, then immediately the person becomes a crony of the government. 
You see, if you don't want to, be, to have cronies, you must make sure everybody fails. If anybody succeeds, then he becomes a crony. Actually, many of my cronies, real cronies, are very poor. But the unreal cronies, these are the successful people. I knew them. I didn't know, know them before, but because they were successful, I knew them. And it is the same with these uh, ship boat building people. I thought that they should upgrade their capability. They should build warships. And warships are very, very sophisticated ships. They are not like ordinary ships. They have all kinds of electronics, controls, this, then, and that, their operations room. They can actually steer the boat without seeing the sea at all. Before, of course, you must look at the sea to see whether there is an another boat in front or some, something in front. But nowadays, you don't have to look at that. You look at the, the picture on the screen which tells you whether there is something in front or not. So you can actually sit in the bowel of the ship and steer the ship. That's how sophisticated ship steering and navigation is today. And this, the Koreans are able to design the ship, put in all the electronics, the wiring, the plumbing, everything, and do it faster than anybody else. So this Malaysian company teamed up with the Koreans, and they were able to halve the time for building the ships at almost half the cost. That is why Koreans are able to compete with the rest of the world, because they are faster, they are cheaper, they maintain good quality. Now, if the Koreans can transform themselves, we all can transform if we learn something from them. They want to face the challenges of this world. They don't want to be, they don't want to be, remain a developing country, planting rice and uh, these, uh, the cabbage that they like to eat, a lot of chili, nimchi, kimchi, kimchi. <laughs> I love Korean food, that's why I know it's called kimchi. So they have made progress because they adjust themselves to the surrounding. The world is very challenging to them. If they remain backward, they cannot succeed in this world. So to do that, they acquire knowledge, they learn everything that, all the knowledge that is available, they develop their own skill, they work very hard. They work very hard and they are much more disciplined. So for the graduates, of the 21st century. I would recommend that you learn from the Koreans. If you want to deal with the 21st century, which is going to be very challenging, we're living in a very challenging world. If you make a mistake, you fail. Even the great countries of the West, you know they are facing a financial crisis because they made mistakes. We have to avoid those mistakes. To avoid them, we must know what is it that they did which caused them to go into this state of crisis? So we need knowledge and we need to accept the fact that we have to face competition. And the only way we can face competition is to have the necessary language, knowledge and to have that quality, that value system that can enable you to succeed. You may have all the knowledge in the world, but if you go to sleep all the time, 24 hours a day, you're not going to succeed. You think, you agree with me? I think, I think so. Uh, you see, the man with the knowledge must also have the will to work, to work hard, to be disciplined, not to be, um, diverted by a get-rich-quick scheme, some Pak uh, Mantelo um, or somebody like that will come along to say, you don't have to work. You give you, me your money, I will multiply it. And you get taken up. Some very intelligent people put their money with Pak Mantelo 
You know, in, in America also, there is a bigger Pak Mantello. He's now been arrested. But uh, if you get diverted towards these get-rich-quick schemes and not working with your knowledge, then you will fail to meet the challenges of the 21st century.